Okay, the one in the in the white, that's our oldest daughter. And her name? It's Rosalie Long from Gackle. Okay, and then of course you in the middle there. Yes. And on the left? That's that's the daughter to our daughter. And what's her name? Annie Gerhardt. Her husband is Gerhardt. Okay. And that's your mom? That's my mom. And who's she holding? Okay. She's holding the daughter of Annie, which would be my great grandchild or the great great grandchild to my mother. But the thing is, uh, the thing is that uh, when my our granddaughter Annie was pregnant, and then she said, "I'm going to have that baby on your hundredth birthday." And my mother said, touched her and said, "Yes, you, you're going to have that baby on my hundredth birthday." And then at her hundredth birthday, that baby was born. So that's. Do you remember the baby's name? I think it's Braden. 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 Yes. And my granddaughter, and it was real close to, to my mother, because my mother was in the Maryland Manor in Bismarck at that time, and she was living in Man then, so she would converse back and forth a lot too. Oh, we have a five generation photo. Okay. Um, what's special about this? this oh, tractor? this tractor is actually the uh, same tractor as, as we went through before. It's in 1947, Alice Chalmers. But this is not our. My, not, not my tractor as it was. It was somebody else's tractor, and I used it to go to a parade when there was a celebration in the town of Wishick, North Dakota. But I treasured that, this picture because it was the typical exact same tractor looking the same the same year as, as our tractor was the first tractor. So that's and the, it looked just like that. Yes, and that's the story behind that. Nothing, anything. Is that you driving it? Yes. I was driving it through the parade. And this is in Wishick? In Wishick, North Dakota. The rules are in this photo? That's my parents. That's my father and my mother. And uh, that's their wedding, wedding picture. And, yeah. Do you remember when they got married? Yes, it's, I think the date is on there. 1923. 23, okay. See, I wasn't there, so I don't remember. And, uh, well, my dad was born in 1900, and my mother was born in, in uh, 1902. So. And have they ever, did they ever tell you stories about their wedding? No. I, you know what? I forgot to ask them. They would have had some stories, I'm sure. No, no, they never said nothing. Uh-uh. Um, and what do you remember about your parents that the most? What do you remember the most about your parents? What do I remember of them? The most. Well, they were good parents. That's what I remember. And, of course, everything was in our German German language, whatever it was. Uh, I don't know what else I can tell you. What I would ask you, I would ask you, what can you remember of your parents? And this here is also your parents. Yes. Yes. Um, and was this a special occasion? That was a fiftieth wedding anniversary. Yes. And how did you celebrate? How do you celebrate? That was not that big of a celebration. They, uh, 
Well, there was party, there was dancing, and and a lot of German singing, and uh, and uh, well, my dad arranged quite a bit of it, and there was this uh, lady, she she was the Miss North Dakota. My dad had invited her, and she did some songs. Miss North Dakota, she was a girl from Napoleon here. And then his friends were all there. We didn't, it wasn't too big of a celebration. Obviously an older picture. When, when was this taken? Well, when I look at the picture, I would guess that I could have been maybe three years old. Huh? And if I was, I was born in 24, so that could have been 24, 25. That could have been like in 27, I would think, 1927. That's an old, old car set in there. And uh, there was a, t a teacher and my dad are playing checkers. There, there was a school teacher and the, and uh, many of the school teachers were boarding at our house because, it, because we lived fairly close to the school, to the country school, about a three-quarter mile or so it was. And so the, we had a lot of boarders there. And, and there's a license on that, on that plate back there. You know what? I don't even know whose car that was. Where is this out at your that, house? That's in front of our house where I was. Well, I was born and raised there, yes. And who are the people in this photo? It's, it's your father, and then who are the two little guys? The, two little guys. One is myself, John, myself, which I thought maybe it looks like I could have been like three, maybe three or four years old, and my older brother, he was a year older than I was. And that's why I watched how they played checkers. And my dad was a... Good fancy checker player, and so I de I developed a knack for being a good checker player. I played checkers in the service on the as we were going overseas on the ship. I would watch where the boys were playing checkers, and I would wait, and I would when they quit, I would take on the winner of the checker player, and generally I would beat. I was a checker champion. I was, and even today I just love to play checkers, but people didn't want to play with me. Is it because you win all the time? Maybe that is one of the reasons. <laughs> we have a, a few kids with farm animals. Yes, uh, those are those are sheep and lambs, lambs there. And uh, and what are what are you doing? My dad bought a few sheep there. A few years, well, it was back in the 30s there, and then he, and then there was always some uh, motherless lambs that didn't have no mother, and then we would raise them with a bottle, giving them milk with a bottle. And we were always milking cows, so there was always enough milk for the little lambs there, and that's, that's, what, it, that's, what, it, that's what we were doing, there, feeding those little bottle lambs. And who were the, the individuals in this photo? Were they your brothers? Yes, they were my brothers, yeah. And do you remember which ones? Yes. Who is the guy on the, the older one on the left here? On the left is my brother, Matt. And then? Matt, yeah. And then it's myself. And then there's Andrew. And then Benedict. And then my brother, Valentine. Okay. And was it usually the boys who were out working with the animals there? Yes, of course, sure. Four kids in this photo. Is this more of your brothers and sisters? I, yes, they are. Now, did your family raise a lot of sheep? Not too many. No, we had about oh, about seventy-five ewes. And that was not many. We only had them for a few years. But our our farming was mainly you know, cows, cattle and milk cows. Okay. That was, my dad had them sheep probably six, seven years and then got rid of them again. 
this picture, what what is going on here? Okay, that's a that's a Belgium stallion. And since we farmed quite a bit of land and had a lot of horses, and then my dad thought he's going to buy a stallion, a stud, to to raise our own our own horses. Okay. Who was this with the horse? Okay, that's that's John, myself, John, uh, with the horse. And what were you doing? Were you taking? Oh, just home? showing off. To get a picture taken because he was such a tame, tame, tame horse. He weighed like over, over a ton. He was a big, strong horse. Oh, he could pull things. We got stuck with a little tractor. Take this one horse and pull out the tractor just with this one horse alone. And he was such a tame horse. And we raised a lot of nice colts out of him, out of that stallion, yeah, Belgium. And there's my brother Andrew standing next there and my brother Ben. They're standing by the door, by the way, I think back the here. The car door or the yeah, house door? The house door. house door. So this is taken at home? Yes, front of the house. Now, was this the first stallion your family owned? Yes, yeah, the first stallion my dad owned. Yeah. Looks like you in uniform. Yes. What can you tell us about this picture? What can I tell? Well, I was proud to be in the uniform to serve our country. And what else can I say about it? That was taken right during or after basic training. That would have been taken in 1945 in Texas, the state of Texas, before I was sent overseas. By writing many, many letters, many, many letters, yeah. When mail call came, that was very important to the boys, mail call. And it always made, made me happy when I got a card or a letter from from Margaret. But this here is what I wrote to Margaret, this card here. But Margaret always wrote me letters. And uh, I wrote her many cards and often a letter to I think Margaret just saved the cards, which is okay. I'm kind of proud of that. And I wrote letters to my siblings. How often would you write? How often would I write? Well, whenever I had the time, not every day was I was able to write a letter, but sometimes probably I would write three or four letters at, at one time, and then maybe after three days I would write again. So I did a, a, lot, of, a lot of writing. And what kind of things would you talk to them about in, in your letters? Oh, what else talk about? More or less asking questions, what's going on at home? Some things we were, we were told not to write. We, we, our, our mail was censored before it would leave because uh, in case of uh, somebody would get it in the wrong hands, kind of the enemy or somebody would get it in the wrong hands. So we had to be careful what we write. So, so we always wrote things like, I'm going and doing good and I'm feeling fine. And, I got you a letter last time, and so and so and so, and how is so and so? So just you? general questions. Yeah, I get asking questions. Yes. Now, did, did she keep all of your postcards? Your no, letters? she didn't keep all of them. No. And what? But she kept. Letters she wrote you. They got lost. The, along the many ways, um, um, along the many years by, I would have to ask Margaret what she did with the letter. <laughs> John, this looks like a bunch of money. What can you tell us about this? Oh, this money was given to me by some Japanese prisoners that I had 
in control of that day, I had working for me. And uh, they made, made up to me as good, as good friends. And they would dig down in their pockets and give me just about whatever they had. I had some more Japanese money, but we I gave some of it away already. As a, as a remembrance, they gave me that money as a remembrance, I think, them Japanese people. There's, and where were you? Well, that was in the Philippine Islands, in, Luz, in, the, in the island of Luzon, mm -hmm. by, near, by Batangas near Manila. But there's, there's one money there. This one there was a centaur. That's a, that's a Japanese money that they could buy stuff with in the, in the Philippine Islands with. That was the government, Japanese government had made that money. With this other money, they couldn't buy nothing in the Philippine Islands. But with that there, they, there was more money they called it Japanese. Japanese uh, centaurs, Japanese pesos. It's the one in the corner there. But the others is just a real old, 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 old money that I guess the Japanese didn't have no use for that. And the, they couldn't spend it in the Philippines. There's other money here. John, you're still in uniform here. Where, where are you? Oh, that, that picture was taken in 1946, I would say, like in, uh, like in August of 1946 in the Hawaiian Islands by the island of Oahu near Honolulu and near the Waikiki Beach. And, of course, at that time the war was, was over. So... Were you on duty in Hawaii? I was uh, working for, as a billeting clerk uh, when the airplanes came in to, uh, to put people into their barracks, into their, where they were sleeping. And of course, when the plane left, I would have to call them again. That was my job in the billeting area. I was on duty there all the time, yes. And where where are you here? Are you back home? Yes, here I'm back home, and here I I put my uniform on. And uh, after I came home, and then uh, we bought I bought a jeep. It was our vehicle that we could get around with. And I just must have happened on Memorial Day, and I put on my uni had my uniform on, and I had my picture taken on the behind the jeep there. John, these look like arrowheads. Where did you find these? These arrowheads. Way back in the 1930s when the land blew, and then uh, it would leave the little stone and rocks lay, and of course then you'd find, find those arrowheads where the Indians had one time occupied this land before the white man came across. So there was just a lot of those Indian arrowheads. So I found them like on our land where my dad's farm was. Those are just, those are just a very few. We had lots of, lots of them. We would sell them for a nickel and a dime. And uh, we thought that was making pretty good money when we found them arrowheads. Now, most of them were flint. But now this one, bigger one, is not flint. That's the only one I've ever seen that was not flint. Flint is like a certain rock that's very shiny. But that one is not flint. So I'm kind of wondering about that one. But most of them, and some were big and shh. They were like uh, three inches long and, and sharp and pretty and nice, and some were small. And where did you find these? Well, on the on the land where you, on my dad's farm, my father's farm. John, what's happening in this photo here? Oh, that's uh, our first tractor that we bought in 1947. It's a Model B Ellis Chalmers. And that was really the thing. And uh, we were married then. My wife Margaret is standing there. And the boy sitting on this seat was Margaret's little brother. He was 12 years old at that time. And what's his name, John? His name was Jack. But he just died here recently now. Oh, that was a 
supposed to. We thought it was a good tractor, but nowadays it would be, it would be good for lawn, do, to do your lawn work, it seems like. But at that time, it really did the job for us. Was that at her mother's house, or is that out at Her mother's time? house. Mar Margaret's mother's house, yes. Yes. Okay. And who's in this photo, John? Those are the one on the on the far left, I would say, far over. That yes, that's that's myself, John. And the next is my brother Andy. And the next is Ben. Benedict. And they were in the Korean War, during the Korean War. They served all the time during the Korean War, Andrew and Benedict, my brothers. I'm the only one that was in World War II. And the next one there is Valentine. He was in the service after the Korean War, so he was never overseas. And the last one was my brother Pius, and he was in the service too, but not uh, doing any war. And how much younger than you was Pius? Oh, how much younger is Pius? Boy, I would have to start figuring too. Maybe, fi maybe 15 years. Okay. And what, what were you doing here? Why were you all dressed oh, up? Oh, just to have a picture taken because to show how many boys from one family were served that country. And it was just a lot of pictures taken. Then we thought that was all right, we'll do that. John, it looks like a couple of guys are marching in this picture. What are they doing? Well, we're walking up to the cemetery from the Legion Hall. That's on on the Memorial Day. Then we always have a program there. And uh, it just so happens here we are just pictured alone, but there's many more walking. And uh, then we dress in the uniform, and then we have a good service in the cemetery honoring our our veterans, our soldiers that have died. And so I'm carrying, I'm on the honor guard here. Is that you and who else? That was John Fettig. Is he on the, in the blue? Yes, Johnny Fettig was in the blue. And how often would you do this, just every oh, Every Sunday? year, at Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Yes. Looks like a recent photo of you and your wife. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I can say about it. A recent photo. And uh, it's very recent because if it would have been years back, then I would have had a head full of hair and hair, no more hair on my head. Were you so, at an anniversary or anything? No. Huh? That was just maybe we wanted to empty the camera before we developed the pictures. It was not a planned picture. It's a nice picture, though, and then we. And is this your mother? Yes. And what was special about this picture? Oh, it's on my mother's 100th birthday. And we had a good celebration. What was that celebration like? Oh, we had, we had church services. And uh, we had a lot of people there. And uh, all the, her children, had uh, part in the services. Uh, one of my brother, that's a priest. He was had the ma had mass, and one of my other brothers, that's a, 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 a monastery monk. He was a, a mass server, and and the others did some reading, carried up the gifts, and and, and uh, I did the music. And there were people from far and wide, even our friends came from Germany. They promised my mother, my, my mother asked them when they were here years before, when I got my 100th birthday, are you going to come? So they promised my mother they would be here. When my mother was 100, sure as heck, they came from Germany to have celebrated. And there was a big, big feast and a lot of food, drinking, and, and, and fellowship with friends. Was it a long day? 
Yes, it was all day fair and even into the evening yet. Yes. It looks like here you're playing the organ. Yes. Here I played the organ for my mother's 100th birth birthday. That's actually the only time I ever played uh, the organ in church. But I, det I was determined to play, to make the music for my, in, in honor of my mother on her 100th birthday. And I knew that would make her happy because my mother's husband, which would have been my dad, he was a church organist for I don't know how many years, maybe 30 years. And then I make a, made an extra effort to, to play music that day. And how long have you been playing the organ? Well, when I, my dad had a, had a foot organ around the house when I was a little kid. And then I would fool around with that, so I would say maybe till 15 years. When I was 15 years old, I would pick it up. And then there was a time my dad didn't have no more organ. The old organ got old and they threw it out. And then when we got married, I bought an organ again. And then we had to start practicing again. And then I got into it again. But I don't play notes. It's all by ear. So, so how many years? Well, how many years? Yeah, at least 60, 70 years. Did you learn well from your father then? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. In this photo, it looks like you're playing with um, some band members. Well, there was there was this folk fest going on in Bismarck that was being planned. This folk fest, so Troy guys came out to me from Fargo, and uh, I don't know how he found my name at that time. And asked me whether we, I could get somebody together that we could do some German music. It was different ethnics had to do something, were asked to do something, to do some music. And then I got these fellas together, and uh, and then we did entertaining up there. This one man plays the organ, accordion, there. Do you do this pretty often? Pardon? Do you do this pretty often? No, no. That was just a one-time thing then, this thing here. And, uh, well, let's see once. I think three of the fellows have passed away already. That was just a one-time thing there. 